Hey everyone, Devin here, and in uh, this video I'm going to be going over uh, installing uh, Mac OS 11 on a MacBook 2012, mid-2012. Um, I should preface this not a tutorial or anything like that, I'm just kind of doing this and taking guys along for the ride because I figured this is something I was going to do anyway, so I'm going to record it give me something else to do. Um, it's something I want to do since uh, Mac OS 11 came out, since they dropped support for the mid-2012 uh, uh, MacBooks, but uh, I uh, <laughs> wanted to wait a little bit longer until they figured out uh, all the ins and outs of uh, everything. Um, the reason this is different, if you don't know, the mid-2012s are unsupported, which is unfortunate because uh, I recently put an SSD in my MacBook uh, last March during the pandemic, and of course, as soon as I did that, Apple drop support, and I know my MacBook is uh, capable of running um, a newer version, the latest version. It's also kind of unfortunate too because this other, I can't remember what it's called, Mac OS 11, I don't know what, I don't even know what the numbering scheme is anymore, the new one's coming out that they just unveiled back in June, I don't know. Um, but I'll probably wait a little bit longer for that one too, just want to see if I can even get this one to work. Um, I would say though, if you are do plan doing this to your MacBook, I'd recommend you do so only if you have an SSD or you upgraded the internal hard drive from the 5400 to at least the 7200, because the original 5400 drives that came in these MacBooks are absolutely terrible. And SSDs are so cheap now, I'd recommend going that route. Um, but without further ado, let's just jump right in. So I'm using the patch sir um, thing here for the actual download of the uh, Mac OS, and it's interesting, they have this uh, website on the website shows um, each MacBook, you know, which, what's compatible, like which one's not, and then depending on which MacBook you have, like which year, you know, 2012 all the way to 11, 10, whatever, uh, what you can and can't do with it, you know, say for example, Wi-Fi doesn't work or something of that nature, it'll show you that. And I'll leave a link to this download and below where you can download it. And I'm glad I waited because apparently this came out shortly after I was debating whether or not I wanted to actually do this. And um, so, <clears throat> I thought if it makes things easier. So from my understanding, it's pretty much just like any other um, installation that you put on a USB drive, so this should be interesting. Let's see. Yep. Yep, definitely read that. This is pretty neat too, so it kind of tells you um, what is going to be working and then what isn't going to be working. Um, usually the... Um, I, I think they're saying that... Um, Okay, so Wi-Fi is working, so it was a different one I was looking at. I, I thought I saw it said one of them that Wi-Fi wasn't going to work, but I guess it's a different one. And I want the... So here you pick your release track if you want the um, play stable release of the beta tracks. I want the stable ones, I don't want the other ones. Alright, and then... Let's see... latest version... Okay, so I'm gonna let that do that, I guess. Alright, so this is just about finished up. Uh, real quick, just to be safe, I'm going to go to just to the. You might do this by itself, but I just want to make sure um, my flash drive, which I don't even see on here. Interesting. Okay, that was weird. Try it. so long. So I'm going to erase this real quick. I'm still used to the old-fashioned <laughs> way of doing this, I just do not recognize the interface. Okay, it's the USB installer. This works. Brace. Okay, this is still going. Okay, 
trusty flash drive I'm sure is going to give out one day. I figured out what I did wrong. I just had to make sure the USB installer is in a uh, GUID partition scheme and not MBR. It was stupid. <laughs> Dumb mistake. Uh, right, so I'm going to continue and erase. And I have to enter my password. Jesus Christ. Okay, here we go. Alright, everyone, so we have returned from the copying process. It took probably about a little over an hour, a little bit longer than I initially expected, but everything's good to go. Um, if you would do, if you are um, doing this on your MacBook, I do. I noticed that it likes to hang at like 0%, but it is actually working and it's not just freezing up. It goes in increments of 10, I found out, just by letting it sit there. So if it does hang on 0 for a while, just don't worry, it'll, it'll progress on its own. Like I said, it goes through increments of 10. Um, it doesn't go to like 1%, 2%. Anyway, All right, so now we are good to restart the Mac and move on from there. All right, so I switched over to the camera here, so let's see if we can... Just restart. Don't want that to happen. There we go. Now we have to hold down the option key. Get the flash drive in. Let's go to EFI boot. I'll shut down the screen for a second. Oh, I have to turn it back on to... And we have to hold option again. Now we go to... Installing Big Sur, which is a... <laughs> Stupid name for an operating system. Alright, so I'm an idiot. Forgot to hit record. Anyway, um, once you get to this portion of the installer, it'll, once it boots up, it'll ask you to... Um, if you want to select uh, what you want to select, either install or backup or whatever, so you just hit install. And from my understanding, it looks like they used a recovery wizard to make this work. Um, it did have the option on there when the USB drive was adding stuff uh, to add like backup Wi-Fi kex and things like that, which is nice. And for those that don't know, a kex basically is like a driver for as like a driver for Windows. A kex is the same it's the terminology for Macs. So if we have to install those manually, we can. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. If you have Hackintosh experience, if you ever messed around with one in the past, this would be uh, very handy if you're doing this kind of thing. But anyway, I'll come back after this is done. Alright, and we're back. It took about the typical time, uh, just a normal Mac installation took. Um, don't want any of this, don't want that. And, uh, it was successful the first try, I didn't have any issues with, uh, the installation at all. Like I said, it took about the normal time a Mac installation takes. Let's see, yeah, it looks like we're in. Everything is, uh, we go, we got the new fancy icons down here. Kind of remind me of Linux a bit. Launchpad and graphics are fully accelerated, which is good. Looks like we do. Might have Wi Fi problems. Uh, sound. Sounds like it's working. 
maybe. Okay, so I was looking at the uh, guide on the website, or the official link, which I'll, like I mentioned, I really open in the description, and it mentioned that there's a, if you give it time, it'll eventually work out the Kex errors, but I'm actually just going to go ahead and run the installer. Um, the sound is working, I did test it, that is, it is working perfectly fine, so that's all good to go. Just the Wi-Fi is the only one, which apparently there is something included. Um, I'm not sure. It's probably here. Does the application get with it or not? Um, just run the program again. Open patch kicks. I can't remember what password I have for anything. Alright, so after I ran that, I just restarted the computer and my Wi-Fi problem appears to be fixed. So I think everything is good to go now. Just gonna double check real quick, see if I can go to a website. I have one notice one thing. Uh, the computer doesn't seem to be slow at all. I just noticed that the graphics card thing seems to have a hard time keeping up with everything. Um, not that it's not accelerated, it is accelerated. Um, obviously otherwise this would lag. Um, but I just want to see real quick if I can still go online, which I believe I can. And it looks like we're good to go. Awesome. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in doing this for yourself, I'll leave the links down below. You can download this. Overall, it was a pretty simple process. It just took a little bit of time. Um, if you have a mid to early 2012 MacBook, I, I think the light still supported. I'm not entirely sure though. Um, anything before 2012, um, I think before 2011, you have to check the guide. It might be a bit more difficult for you to update at this point. Um, still interesting, I feel like I could probably update this Mac a couple more times. Um, I know with Apple's new uh, CPU chips coming into play, once they start dominating the Apple lineup, it's going to be a lot harder for these Intel-based Macs to update to the newest versions, if not impossible. Um, but yeah, any anyway, just an interesting thing to do on a slow Monday, or Sunday, whatever day it is. <laughs> Monday, I guess. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, and I'll see you on the next one.